YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back with 10 sneaky good undrafted free agency signings. I did a video on the 15 very best signings. That was a hit. So here I got some I got some good ones that are a little under the radar here. Sleep, sleeper candidates to make their roster, maybe have a good NFL career. Starting with the quarterback going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Michael Hires from Samford. He played for three different schools, most recently on Samford. He had a really productive season two seasons ago. I thought he was going to get drafted late. It was not a guy talked about a whole lot. I kept hearing his name, though, like a watch out for him to get drafted late. Um, usually the type of guy that teams take a chance on if you're going to take a quarterback on day three. You know, solid arm, um, you know, didn't have the best talent around him, didn't play against the best competition, so maybe a reason he didn't get drafted, I suppose. But the Bucs, you know, I think if you look down the depth chart, maybe it's a little bit more open there. I, I think he'll have an opportunity, so a guy to watch at the Buccaneers training camp. Another one here, Garrett Greenfield, offensive tackle from South Dakota State. Another guy I thought would get drafted, his teammate, and fellow offensive lineman Mason McCormick, who, who was a much better player, a much bigger name, uh, got drafted by the Steelers guard from South Dakota State. But here's a tackle that played very well. I mean, if watching them, but watching their running back, Isaiah Davis, who got drafted by the Jets, you know, wide open holes these guys created. And South Dakota State usually has a pretty good offensive line. We've seen guys drafted or picked up from there before, and they had two really good ones. So I thought Greenfield would be, um, you know, picked up. Maybe there's a chance he moves over to guard. Uh, you know, Seattle needed some solid depth. They needed solid starters from the interior. They got that within the draft. But here's a guy that, that could really, really has a shot to make the roster as a depth guy, not like a big name because he's on somewhat of a smaller school here. Another offensive lineman that I really liked is Donovan Jennings from South Florida. And he goes to the Green Bay Packers, which usually pretty good. With offensive linemen, no wing talent on the offensive line, but developing talent and kind of finding sneaky guys to play. Um, so here's one to watch. He played tackle for South Florida, and he has the measurables. He has the traits you look for, um, you know, the foot quickness, good length, but there's some talk about him going to guard. You could definitely see the upside and maybe him it being a little easier for him playing guard. So very curious to see what the Packers do. You know, with them, they, they definitely needed depth. They probably needed a couple starters, and they may have found some throughout the draft, including the first round with Jordan Morgan. But, you know, they have a sneaky one here that, that possibly can be a backup and fill in at tackle or guard for them. So I actually like his chances to make the team, even though he now has some competition because what else the Packers added to the draft. But they seem to like guys that can play multiple spots. Remember Zach Tom coming in, it's like, is he going to stay at tackle? Because we know he can play guard. Uh, Elgin Jenkins is a guard that can play tackle. So, uh, and they have a few guys like that. So Jennings is another one that has potential to be that versatile, uh, legit depth piece for them. So, and again, Packers really good at developing those guys. So I like that one a lot. I thought he had a shot to get drafted very late. Here is a really sneaky one. We're digging a little deep for this one. I like it a lot. Elijah Collins, who actually was most recently on Oklahoma State behind who was probably the best running back in college football in Ollie Gordon. Um, you know, so behind him before this year at Oklahoma State, he was with Michigan State for a bit, was even behind Kenneth Walker at one point, and he didn't get a ton of reps. You know, and he's switching schools, he's trying to find an opportunity. He did not get a ton of reps at all. You know, so never really got the chance to be a starter, but behind some star running backs, but Man, this guy ha has the traits. He has the athletic. He's a freak athlete and for, with a pretty good build to him as well. Like, he has the makings of a running back, an NFL running back. And, again, he never really got that big opportunity, the legit opportunity. I'm sure he did in practices, you know. So it's a little disappointing that he didn't stick with one school and he didn't earn a starting job. But, again, behind some star running backs. And when he did get some carries, which – Really was very few. I thought he looked legit in the limited uh, limited uh, reps we get to see from him. I thought he looked pretty legit. And again, he has the athletic traits for sure, and I think some some good some good power, some some good size to go along with it. So this is a very sneaky one. That it's a guy with, with the right opportunity and with the right coaching development with his traits. I think actually could be something. The Bengals. They got a deeper running back room, but it's not the best running back room in my opinion. But there, there's some guys that can play. Um, it's a little deeper. So 
that's a sneaky, really sneaky guy to watch out for, former Michigan State and Oklahoma State running back. Um, we will see. And another one I really love for this video is Marcus Roseme, Jack Saint from Georgia. Um, solid contested catcher. He's got incredible hands. He didn't have a single drop this year. Not a single drop. So that that's impress, impressive. I really thought he would get drafted in the sixth round maybe. Uh, the commanders get him, which they have some good starting receivers. They need a depth pretty bad. Uh, and they drafted Luke McCaffrey like in the third round. I don't think there's much of a difference between, you know, they're different style receivers, but in terms of talent, McCaffrey uh, and Rosemary Jack Saint here. So one to watch. And those Georgia receivers, they're always pretty solid, but they're always pretty underwhelming in stats, you know, in production, uh, you know, because Georgia's going to play, you know, a lot of smash mouth football, punch, you know, punch it in the mouth. We're going to pound the football. We're going to dump it underneath the. Brock Bowers, and you know, even when Pickens was there, like we knew the potential. And Jack Saint's not him, but we knew the potential. But we're always left wanting more. But we knew it was kind of prob, you know, probably the Georgia offense. And then Ad Mitchell was there. He moved to Texas, I, I think, for more opportunities, more production, and that you know, I think that was the right call, even though going for a lesser of a school. But actually, they made the playoff, and Georgia didn't. But another powerhouse, obviously. So um, it's just Georgia's offense, you know. So I think this is a guy that is a pretty consistent receiver and I think he is a safe bet to maybe make a you know if, if it's at the back end of the roster that's fine but make a roster so really like this one I thought he was a big time sleeper I really thought he's going to be drafted I thought he'd be a little bit more productive at the next level we will see uh on to we had five offense five defense we're going to stick with the commanders actually and we're gonna go Tyler Owens a Texas Tech safety who lit up the NFL combine I mean explosive explosive athlete all the drills across the board. So it makes you go like, all right, you have a decent safety, which the tape was a little bit better, but you got, you got a guy we want to work with here. And it's a guy you can do different things with. You can play split safety. You can come downhill, play in the box. You got Dan Quinn, who's a defensive genius is now the head coach of the Washington commanders. And he specifically is really good with those types of safeties, you know? And I, I thought, you know, he made some safeties, maybe look a little better than they are perhaps in Dallas. Um, you know, so this guy has potential to be, be something could he be like a Jerron Curse type player like how he had in Dallas Dan Quinn that is so just a freak athlete with a lot of upside it's definitely a guy you would love to get undrafted because it's a guy you want to work with it's a guy that you know if he doesn't work out uh, because maybe he just doesn't have the the consistent player or the smarts you know you know then that's fine he's undrafted but he's a freak athlete you want to work with so we had back to back ones there for for the Commanders another defensive guy I really like this this could be my favorite one. Uh, on the, in the whole video here, he actually almost Evan Anderson could have made my top 15 best signings list. Uh, the Florida Atlantic nose tackle goes to 49ers. 49ers, 49ers had a pretty good undrafted free agency. I thought he had a couple guys make that other list, but I really thought Anderson would get drafted. Uh, I had him sixth round, but I thought there was a chance he actually go earlier than that. He doesn't get drafted at all. It's a really solid nose tackle. Like he shed he sheds blocks very well. You know he plugs gaps. He gets in the backfield. He's gonna stop the run. You know, I guess how much value is in that if, if there's not really a pass rush presence. I think he has upside in that category, but you get a really solid run stopper here. I, I, he was really flashy with his move shedding blocks, too, against the run. So, this is a really good football player the 49ers got here uh, with the nose tackle from FAU. Uh, Faldarius Payne from Virginia Tech, not really a big name. In the draft, I thought there was a shot he can get undrafted just because how flashy he is, the upside. He was an edge rusher at Nebraska. He goes to Virginia Tech. And they kind of, they, he didn't get enough snaps. And that's probably why he didn't get drafted. Another reason he's a little bit of a tweener. Because again, edge rusher at Nebraska, they list him an outside linebacker there. Um, but Virginia Tech, he added a little bit more weight. But Virginia, Te Virginia Tech used him everywhere. They'd actually line him up at nose tackle a bit. And he's not going to play there in the NFL. But he was just too damn quick and had some nifty moves, just just too much for for college football centers. Um, but I like him at like D tackle. You know, three technique would be pretty good. He is a bit of a tweener. Like he he he's very explosive, very athletic. But is he quick enough for the edge where he started? Um, is he powerful enough? Does he have enough size for the interior? So that is why he didn't get drafted. That's kind of the question, but. It's a flashy dude with, with some nice moves and some upside if you find his home, if he puts on a little bit of power. Or, again, he's athletic enough, or maybe he plays, you know, a step outside, 
like he was supposed to coming out of high school. D'Amico Ryan's really good at developing and coaching these guys. So I, I think it's a perfect landing spot for the Houston Texans. Um, you know, so I, I think he has a good opportunity there. Next, we got Eric Watts from UConn, and he was pretty underwhelming this year. But if you look back two years ago, he was pretty productive. If he, if he would have came out that year with the production he had, which wasn't crazy production, uh, but he had, what, seven or so sacks. He got in the backfield, was a disruptor. And combining that with his traits, you know, the length that he has, he's, he's fairly athletic. I definitely think he would have got drafted. And he's a little underwhelming this year, but he still has those traits. Like fairly athletic, uh, really long uh, you know, so it's a guy you want to work with. It's a guy that you're very happy to get undrafted. And going to the Jets, they're pretty good at developing guys. Uh, you know, and uh, they could use some depth at that position. They're really, they're definitely set with their, their legit starters and rotation, uh, their key rotation guy or two. Uh, but it's a good program for him to go develop and, and them to kind of get the most out of his trade. So that, another guy I thought could go six round, perhaps. So a pretty good one there. And then one more, Omar Brown from Nebraska, not talked about much at all. He's listed as safety and sure he can play back there, but I love him at nickel. He mainly played you know, in the slot for Nebraska, and he's good. He's good there. He's quick. He's instinctive. He can be a playmaker, uh, fairly athletic. I think he's a safe bet to be a decent nickel player at some point in his career. So I like him on the, you know, in, the, in terms of depth for the Broncos. Could he end up starting, you know, or playing a good amount of snaps in the game at the nickel position, I'd say sure. It's definitely a possibility. So I'd watch out for him to to make a, a roster. I think most likely be in the Broncos because he's going to be there to, to start the year here. So another guy that, again, wasn't a big name, but I thought he could be drafted. It's just, yeah, supposed to be more of a you know safety, but ends up playing. And, you know, So how much do you value that if he's a, a full-time nickel guy? I, today's NFL, I think it's becoming more and more important. So... Broncos got did did pretty well on drafted free agency. They did very well on day three as well. But there's ten guys that are sneaky sleeper on draft. The guys that I really like and I like where they landed. I like their chances to make some noise here. So we'll keep an eye on those guys. Go check out our other undrafted free agency video. That one's blowing up. So I appreciate you guys very much. Um, we have a bunch of draft content like recap stuff, grades, but winners, losers throughout the draft as well. Check it all out. You won't be disappointed in it. Make sure you join us here. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.